In Gunner Heat PC, there are various forms of Gunner Sight interfaces. Each system includes unique approaches to target acquisition, target ranging, and even target tracking in some cases. The developers have put forth an incredible effort in conveying these for each of us to enjoy in the game. In this video, we will be specifically looking at the optical range finding systems and demonstrate its usage so that you can be best equipped for the battlefield. Use of optical range finders can be found on primarily the main battle tanks within the game's extensive collection of highly detailed vehicles. If you would like to download and play Gutter Heat PC, you could do so over on Steam by purchasing an early access version of the game for 30 US dollars. Uh, it is routinely updated and it also routinely goes on sale. So if 30 bucks is too much, be sure to add it to your wish list and Steam will basically send you an email anytime something on your wish list goes on sale. Before we begin, if you would like to support the channel, be sure to check out the merch shop or alternatively, if you find yourself shopping on Amazon, by simply using my affiliate link, you can support the channel at no additional cost to yourself. By simply clicking on the link to redirect you to Amazon, you can shop as normal and I receive a small advertising fee for Amazon in exchange. Additionally, if you would like to support the channel more directly, please consider leaving the video a super thanks. Optical rangefinders are broken down into two main types, coincidence and stereoscopic. The differences are fairly minor overall and both rely on the same principles and how they operate, but are distinctly different in design and function in terms of how the information is perceived and managed by the gunner. In short, by using triangular principles, a target's range can be acquired. An overly simplified explanation of the principle is as follows. The main body of the device is typically a tube or a housing of some sort with various prisms and lenses within the apparatus. This main body is a known length, and so for this demonstration we would call this side A of the triangle. By keeping side B of the triangle at a fixed 90 degree offset from side A, we now have two known constants, the length of A and the angle of B. The angle required for side C to intersect side B can be used to calculate a target's range. This is an overly simplified top-down explanation of its basic operational philosophy. Where coincidence and stereoscopic rangefinders differ is in how the actual optical internals function. For example, the lenses and prisms mentioned earlier and how they interface with the gunner. Both types utilize a combination of fixed and adjustable prisms. One prism is fixed at 90 degrees adjacent the primary housing on one end, whereas the other is located opposite and is adjustable. And this is where the similarities end. A coincidence rangefinder splits the view from both prisms into a single eyepiece. NATO and Warsaw Pack versions, however, employ two different implementations for the ranging calibration of the site. On the Warsaw Pact vehicles, the gunner must dissect the target displaying an upper and lower image. The fixed prism is normally displayed as the upper image and the adjustable being the lower image. The gunner must maintain the fixed prism on target while manipulating the adjustable prism's lower image to complete the target profile. Conversely, the NATO equipped vehicles utilize a differing method. Both prisms feed their respective images into the same eyepiece, giving the appearance of two images. The gunner must then manipulate the controls until both images are in focus and overlapping. Gunner Heat PC currently only employs the coincidence range finding method. However, the stereoscopic method is another interesting example we see from a long and storied naval tradition, as well as some manned portable aircraft spotting and ranging tools from the First and Second World Wars. And for those wondering, extensive research was done in the 1940s by the National Defense Committee, and neither method was deemed superior to the other, and the comparative accuracy deviations were so minor it was dismissed as margin of error. To demonstrate the NATO implementation of the coincidence rangefinder, we will be using the M60A1 AOS. To begin, place your reticle on the target you intend to range. Once in position, press the E key to activate the range finding function, and it will be apparent if the action occurs because the entire gunner sight may appear suddenly out of focus. Taking care not to move the reticle from the intended target, hold down the control key while simultaneously adjusting the range value by either using the mouse scroll wheel or alternatively page up and page down keys for the respective actions. Adjust the range until the two images are combined and in focus. Note that other objects may still be kind of out of focus and this is perfectly fine as you're ranging your target, not the entire battle space. Finally, engage your target. The M60A1 AOS will not require the readjustment of the main gun's reticle within the sight after adjusting within the rangefinder. 
To demonstrate the Soviet implementation of the coincidence rangefinder, we will be using the T-64R. To begin, place the tip of the central chevron on your intended target. Press the E key to activate the rangefinding function. Here you can already see the upper and lower segments of the coincidence overlay. Hold down the control key while simultaneously adjusting the range value by either using the mouse scroll wheel or the page up and page down keys for their respective actions. Adjust the range value until the upper and lower image align forming a complete target profile. One way to kind of gut check your results is to deselect the range finding function via the E key and verify it matches the profile you ranged. Once satisfied, you will need to reposition the central chevron on the gunner sight back on target as it shifts the position during the ranging process, unlike that of the NATO interface seen with the M60A1 AOS. Once the main gun has been relayed on target, it is ready to fire. Though not as simple as the laze and blaze methods of more advanced systems, the optical rangefinder is an old yet reliable tool and with a practice hand can be quickly utilized. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And while you're down there, enable the bell notification icon so you don't miss any future uploads. That's it for today, folks. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay well. Until next time, please stand by.